So let's do an example of quadratic models. This is an example with sheep. That's why I put this one here when the teacher uses my name as a good example. <laughs> Make it really proud. So we're going to build an, uh, an enclosure for our sheep, and it has the following dimensions. So we have this thing called an x, and x is in meters. And it goes 3x and x minus 3. All right. Well, now we want to write down an equation for the area of the enclosure. And we want it in the general form of a quadratic. Do you notice? This is, this is the general form of a quadratic. All right, well, let's try to remember how do we do the area. So how do we find the area of something? Isn't it just length times width? So I'll draw that. So length times width. Okay, So that's what the area is. Just length times width. I didn't really write it very nicely here. Let me just do it again. So we have length times width. All right, well, let's actually figure that out. The length is uh, 3x, let's just say. So area then is just, let's see, it's going to be length, which is 3x, times the width, which is x minus 3. Now I'm going to continue on, because I do want to write it in this form, not like this. All right, uh, I mean, instead of calling it the area, by the way, I could call it a of x. That's how we're finding the area in meters squared. And it's just going to be, let's see, 3x times x, which is 3x squared. And 3x times minus 3, well, minus 3 times 3 is minus 9. And we still have an x there, so there we go. So I could state then, without a doubt, that my answer is the area a of x equals 3x squared minus 9x. My answer is nice, and I've got it in terms of one variable. Do you notice? So very often, uh, I don't know if you remember this uh, in the other video that I showed you about modeling in general, it said it very often helps to write your model in terms of one variable only. See, if I had length and width, I'd have area equals length times width. The problem is I have an L and a W. See, in this case right here, I can get them all in terms of just one variable. This is excellent because I can graph that. I can do whatever I want with this. So let's keep going. So now we're told uh, we have an area of 30 meters squared. Calculate the value. By the way, uh, like this, you're going to see why I put this in. So why do, <laughs> what do baby parabolas drink? Quadratic formula. <laughs> All right, there's a bunch of ways of doing this. But we do know that the area is 30 meters squared. This is the important part. Okay, So we have to write this down in terms of what we've just done. So we're going to use our answer from before. And instead of a of x, we're going to put in 30. So 30 equals 3x squared minus 9x. Maybe I'll write that down. So 30 equals 3x squared minus 9x. All right. Let me just make sure. Did I do it right? Yes. Okay, good. Now there's a bunch of different ways of solving this, okay? So let's see here. We could use I mean, there's, there's a ton of ways to do it. It's a little bit silly, but um, we could use the quadratic formula if we wanted to quadratic formula. Why is that? You can use a quadratic formula to find the zeros. Watch, if you did that, you would say, um, let's see, you move your 30 over there, so you'd say 0 equals 3x squared minus 9x minus 30, because it would move to the right. And the quadratic formula, you remember, that is, it's, it tells you the x values that work for here. So it would be x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4. Whoops times a times c, all that over 2a. I could do that, and I would get my answers. Right? That's the quadratic formula. There's a bunch of ways. right? So as long as you did that, you put it on a is 3, b is minus 9, c is minus 30, away you would go. Um, can I think of other ways? Let's see. I mean, I, I thought of a whole bunch of different ways. You could, you could solve by graphing. You could actually do that. So what do I mean by that? You could actually graph two separate equations. You could graph the equation uh, y equals 30, and you could graph the equation, because remember, the whole meaning of an equal sign means same as. So you could graph the left side as one thing. You could graph the right side as some other thing. Then you could find the place where they intersect. So you know this would be some sort of place here where those two different graphs intersect. So maybe we have a graph of like this, and maybe some graph of like I don't know, something like that. I'm just guessing here, something like that. And then you'd find where they intersect. You'd find like here and here. You could do it that way. I don't feel like doing that either. Um, what else could you do? You could use a solver, some kind of solver. 
So you could use, for example, uh, something like nsolve if you're on the TI Inspire or something like that. Or a root finder or something like that. But you could do uh, nsolve and say, okay, 30 equals 3x squared minus 9x comma solve for x. You could do it that way. The problem is, though, this one right here will be missing one of them. It'll be missing one of the solutions. Um, a better way to do it is a poly root finder. That'd be even better. You know, so your calculator also has this thing here, like on the TI-84, it's called um, poly SMLT, so poly smult 2. Um, so you could use a root finder, some sort of thing like that. So you could do that. Or I'm going to just uh, graph to find the zeros. I'm going to show you this is the way I choose to do it, okay? So I'm going to say, you know, you could do it this way, you know, or this way or this way, or this way. I mean, there's lots of ways, okay? I just decided to show you, let me just focus on one way of doing it. But uh, we have a lot of different tools at our disposal to actually solve for some sort of quadratic. Let me show you how to graph to find the zero. So let me use this equation right here that we had set up right here, this 3x squared minus 9x minus 30 equals zero. Let me make my square look a little bit nicer, whoops. What did I do there? I'll try to make my square. There we go. So the idea will be, what if I do this graph right here? I'll actually do this graph to see the zero. So let me actually get out my calculator. I'll do a graph, and I'll plot this equation right here. So 3x squared minus 9x minus 30. There's my graph. So maybe I'll even do a little sketch of it. So it goes something like this, okay? Something like that. Now, because it's just a sketch, it doesn't have to be perfect. So let me just show you that. So I'll try to do some kind of sketch like this. And the graph was something like, was it symmetric? No, this looks like it's minus two or so. This looks like one, two, three, four, maybe five, if I just had to guess. So I'll say something like, something like that. Now, like I said, it's just a sketch. It's not perfect, right? But the idea is, if I want to do this, I would find the zeros. So I would find this place right here and this place right here. Let me go ahead and find the zeros. So I would do menu on this one right here at least and do analyze and say, give me the zeros. And it wants a guess. Let's say I want this one right here where it crosses the x-axis. Remember, that's what a zero is because this whole thing right here represents the y on the right side at least. And when we have a zero, that's when we have y equals zero. So when y is zero, we're on the x-axis. So let's say we look at this, and sure enough, it's minus two. And if I do the other one, let's see here, analyze, give me the zeros, left bound, right bound, there we go, and five. Do you notice it's minus two and five? So I could, if I was a little bit stupid about it, I would just say these two zeros. I would say x equals minus two and x equals five. Do any of these make sense though? Because see, this is the mathematical answer. Yes, that is true. This is minus two, this is five. But remember with modeling, you have to think about reasonableness. This is not reasonable. Why not? Well, you can't have a length. Remember we defined x, x was some length in meters. You can't have a negative length. So we could define that, you know, we should have maybe defined that. We should have said x had to be greater than uh, zero. Therefore, my answer and only answer is x equals 5 uh, meters, by the way. So now we can look at the dimensions of the enclosure. Because we know what x is, do you notice now we can go back and put in these different values here? Watch, I'm just going to take this piece right here, attempt to at least. Just this right here, copy. I'm going to get an extra piece I didn't want, but that's all right. I'll do paste. That's okay, I'll just delete after. I'll just get rid of that one, right? So this was the idea, right? Because I have this one right here, I know what x is. Whoops, I didn't move that little piece. That's all right. I know what x is. I know that x is 5. Do you see that? I know this. I just found it above. So because I know x is 5, then I can replace. Everywhere I see an x, I put in a 5. That means the length, then, I could call it length. Maybe I'll do it in a different color. So I could say then the length then will be, let's see, the length will be, let's say 3x. I mean, the length didn't really matter which one you call length or width. I don't think that matters, but 3 times 5. Well, 3 times 5 is 15. And the width 
is just uh, 5 minus 3. That's my exit value is 5. 5 minus 3 is 2. So I could say this, then the length, let's put it in nice terms here, length is equal to 15 meters. And your width, just to sort of set it up nicely here, your width equals 2 meters. And there you go, you're done. So you see, you can use modeling, and there's lots of different ways to do it with quadratics, for example, but we just use our value of x equaled 5. Now, why is this useful? I mean, you can do a lot of things with this. You can do projectile motion. That's something that we do in physics, for example. This is very often plotted as a uh, quadratic, so something that goes, you know, like, yeah, like that. So this is projectile motion. Bridges. Oh my god, do we ever have a lot of those in real life? So, for example, you might have a situation where, you know, you have some bridge that goes over the water or something like that right so this could be some water this might be your bridge here built like this but this piece right here is a quadratic satellite dishes or even parabola or parabolic dishes i mean they're shaped like parabolas like this right here uh something like that i mean i'm drawing a big version of one but you know you could you could have something like this some sort of you know some par parabolic dish like this. Of course, it's probably turned to the side, but there you go. Cost functions and economics and business. I mean, these things might also be used with uh, quadratics. But hopefully this example was helpful just to show you how we can model something with quadratics.